What is up everybody? My name is Shantae Outlaw, in case you didn't know. I am bringing to you a story time. This is actually a pretty difficult story for me to share, you know, but um, I'm going to give y'all the real, the real tea. It's like, no, ain't no tea. But, you know, this is a story about um, trusting your intuition. Like, if you ever in a situation where you get a bad feeling, or like a bad vibe about something it's like trust that feeling and do whatever you gotta do to make sure you get out that situation um yeah trust me i learned the hard way but you know i'm just gonna share a story it happened about like two years ago maybe i think i told y'all y'all know i used to do acting or whatever the acting community is actually like pretty small like a lot of times you can run into the same people you know, you can be on any different set, different movie, different director, all that, but you, you're going to run into the same face and the same people all the time. So, like, people tend to be real friendly. Like, you know, you meet somebody for the first time and you're going to be busting it up with them because, like, we spend a lot of time together and we see each other often. So it's just, like, a real open type of community thing like that. I'm on the set of this show and I see this guy and it's like, I've never seen this guy before. Like I said, you see the same familiar faces, but this particular guy, he, I'd never seen him before. But, you know, he was like cracking jokes, interacting with everybody, making everybody laugh, and going around introducing himself to everybody. I'm like, oh, cool, you know, he's one of those type of people. You know, he, he, he came over and introduced himself, and, um, you know, we talked for a little bit, then he went about his business. It's time to leave, like, it's the end, we're wrapping up, and, um, it's probably, it was an evening shoot, so like by the time we leave, it's probably like 9, 9.30ish, somewhere around there. So like I took the bus. This particular set was like way out of my way, like far from where I live. But I took the bus and, um, you know, I was getting ready to walk to the bus stop to go home. And then I see this guy. What are we going to call him? We're going to call him G. So I, I see G and I'm like, um, I don't know why I drew that name. But <laughs> I see G and he like, yo, you you good? You I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm waiting for the bus. He's like, Oh, you know, I could take you to the train station if you need if you need a ride. He was like, Yeah, my um uh, my homie over there, E <laughs> These names is like my homie E, yeah, he going to the train station. You we could drop you off if you want. I'm like, Oh, cool. That was that was the first mistake. That was the first mistake. I mean, it was like all friendly vibes and like I said it's like a close-knit community but I don't know this guy like this that was my first mistake so I get I, I get in the car with him and then he had another another friend with him um so it's it's, it's G E and who this boo I don't like these names all right so the boy in the front his name Cam boy in the back E and the driver is G so like we all um in the car Big ass. And me. When I first about to get in, in the back seat, it's like all these clothes lying around, loose clothes. Like, not just, not in no bag, nothing, they just loose. And he like, um, the guy who's in the back with me, E, he's getting dropped off at the train station too. And he like, oh, these, these are my clothes. Let me get them, I'm gonna put them in the trunk. So he put his clothes in the trunk. I'm like, all right, cool. We get in the car. Let me drive it. Now the train station is not really actually that far. It's probably like probably seven, ten minutes, something like that. Um, so we we get in the car, we start driving, and Cam in the front in the passenger seat, he gets a call and he plays his call on speaker and somebody calls him like um, he's supposed to be picking up some weed from this guy, and I'm like um, okay whatever. He's like, yeah, the guy like, yeah, come come get it now. Like, you gotta hurry up because I'm about to go out, you know, so, so, so I'm like, right. you know, so they're like, oh, you mind if we go stop to pick this up real quick? And I'm like, uh, sure, you know, what, okay. So, we go to meet this guy, pick up the stuff, you know what I'm saying, we drive off. Then, they're like, oh, I gotta stop at the gas station. Um, I think they probably need to get a wrap or something. So I'm like, all right, cool. 
we stop it again, but okay. So we stop at the gas station. And the guy in the back, E, and Kim, they get out, go do what they do. And it's just me and the driver, G. Um, he in there, and then like he start talking, asking all these questions. But it was like real personal type questions. Like, um, I don't know, people ask me this all the time. Like, what's, what's your sexual orientation? And all that type of stuff. And like, oh, so you ever been with a guy? And that type thing and I'm just like I, don't know, I hate these type of questions because it's like low-key I know where they be headed and I ain't really with it but I answered them and then the other guys came back so then we driving and then G says he's like oh um you know I'm taking uh E I'm dropping him he lived down um like down further south so I'm taking him to uh, the West End train station. Uh, you, like, you, you want to go to that one or you want to go to the one right here? And I'm like, well, I kind of got to go south too. So I'm like, yeah, I guess you could take me to the West End. He's like, all right, yeah, because I was already taking him down that way anyway. So we could just take that. We could just drive down to that station instead. So I'm like, all right, this will get me there faster. Um, that was mistake number two. And have done that. Now that puts me in this car with these strangers for longer than I have to be, right? So, but I'm not paying it no mind. I'm not paying it no mind. I'm like, okay. Okay, cool, cool. So, we driving, and like, it's quite a ways until we get to the other station. So, they roll up, start smoking, and then they pass around, like, oh, you smoke? You want, you, you want smoke? And I'm like, uh, I thought about it, but I ain't think about it long enough. And I was like, alright. Yeah, you know, I do smoke. Come on. No, why not? That was mistake number three. You not like my brother always told me like if you're gonna smoke, like don't do it with people you don't know. Like don't ever smoke with strangers because you don't never know like what the intentions are. You don't know what like if you ain't watch I ain't watched Bull roll it up, like I don't know whether he laced it, nothing, you know, I'm just taking it blindly and I'm like, alright, well, you know, it's all good. You know, they cool people, not paying it no mind. So then we smoke, it's going around. And um, I don't know, like that thing started hitting me. And, um, you know, they start asking these real deep questions. And I'm like, I can't even like function right now. I can't answer these questions. So they all laughing, joking, you know. Um, and then like, I overhear the guy in the front seat, Ken, he like, he like, yo, he said to the driver, he like, yo, uh, she, she gay or whatever. And then the boy, the driver, he like, no, no, I think she, I think she bi, yeah, yeah, she go, yeah. And I'm like, okay, um, what's that about? And then the guy like, oh, yeah, that's what's up. And he get excited. I'm like, um, like, mind you, they don't know I can hear them. Cause like, I, we had the music playing or whatever and they talking amongst themselves. But I hear I hear them saying this and I'm like, you know, what's what's that about? But I don't pay it no mind. And we steady driving, we're still driving. The next thing you know, we get off the highway. Right. And then like, I don't know, I start getting like real fuzzy. Like, I don't know. I like I smoke you know, like I, I well I don't smoke right now, but I used to smoke like pretty often and it's like, you know, I can pretty much handle myself, but it was like, this was weird. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like, I start getting fuzzy and it's like, I, I don't, I don't even remember, like, a lot of things that happened. Like, it was like glitches, like, in my memory from that night. But, um, yeah, so like, I don't know whether I, like, those dogs or something but like i don't remember what happened in this time period um but then next thing i know um you know like when i'm what i can remember now is like um we got off the highway and then we get uh like now we like close to the train station the west end station where he said he was gonna take us um but in order to get to that station he should have made it right but he didn't he just kept going straight and I'm like, um, I, I, I'm noticing it, but like I said, I'm still kind of fuzzy, so like I ain't really say nothing. And then um, we just keep driving. 
and uh so then like i i feel myself like my eyes getting heavy and it's like i'm about to doze off or not and um i'm like wait 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 then i came to my senses a little bit i'm like wait a minute you can't you can't do that because like you know i don't know these people i'm in a car with strangers three guys at that and i'm like yeah no no you can't doze off so like i'm trying to fight it and in the midst of me doing this I'm realizing we going down this kind of like a dark road. It's not like super dark. It's like maybe one street light on this road. So we going down this dark road. And then Cam says to the driver, he like, yo, right there, right there. Pull over right there. And, and the driver like, no, 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 not yet, not yet. And um, like I said, like I'm hearing this, but like I'm not there. Like my mind is somewhere else. Like I, I hear it, but I'm not coherent enough. Like I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say they drugged me, they laced it, I don't know. But I just know that, like, when I smoke on my own, it's never, like, this type of feeling that happens to me. So, like, I'm, like, completely out of it. I hear it, but, like, not enough to be able to act on anything. So, they keep driving, and then, now we turn down an even darker road. Like, there's no street lights on this joint. And, like, he's, the driver speeds up, start driving real fast, doing all these turns, and, like, we down this dark street so then like you know i'm 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 trying to process everything and like i'm trying to fight this like drowsiness that i'm feeling so i'm like all right you know come on girl you gotta pull it together because like i don't know it, it started seeming real suspicious to me i'm putting the pieces together and i'm like yeah no nah, something ain't right about this so um and i'm like and they didn't say nothing about us stopping nowhere else like you know we strictly supposed to be going to the train station um so the like the bull i hear him in the front seat he like yeah it's about to be fun or something like that and i'm like um i hear him so i sit up and then they start talking and i don't know what it is that they're saying like they literally whispering at this point so they say something and i then i'm like wait wait a minute what y'all what y'all talk about and then it was one of the moments where it was like, you know, people trying to cover up what they said. They're like, oh, yeah, no, nah, I was saying that, um, and then he like, yeah, no, nah, because he was saying, yeah, remember how to, um, yeah, that's what we was talking about. <laughs> they start laughing, but it's like, I know that, like, they was trying to cover up the situation. That's not what they was just talking about. You know, they just came up with something. So I'm like, okay, now I'm, I'm putting things together, and I'm like, wait a minute. So I say to the driver, I'm like, where are we going? Now, <laughs> that's a pretty normal question to ask, right? It's like, you know, he's supposed to be taking us to a train station. And, um, you know, if that was the case, then, you know, people would just be like, oh, where are we going here? Or if you had to stop somewhere, you'd be like, oh, well, I'm going to stop over there. But no, no, no. I say, where are we going? The first thing the driver says, he's like, what, you don't trust me? And I'm like... Why is that the first thing that come to your mind? It's like now, like I mean, I was already a little suspicious, but now the fact that you say that, that's the first thing you thinking. Now you got me like even more on edge. So I'm like, all right, yeah, nah, it, this ain't right. Then, um, the guy in the back seat, I guess, like you know, he he see me, so like he could see my reaction. Then he like try to step in, and then he like, no, nah, yeah, we we going to the train station then. And then the driver like, yeah, the the GPS is, uh, you know, it's acting crazy. The GPS not really, you know, showing me the thing. And mind you, we in the, one of them cars where it, like, got the GPS on the, like, the display screen. It was, like, this big old thing, but, like, it wasn't on. He never, like, put the address, nothing, nothing in it. Like, it's blank. So, like, he talking about the GPS ain't working, but it's, like, you don't even have the GPS on. And he didn't have one on his phone either. Uh, so I'm like, all right. Now, I'm starting to panic. Because I'm like, this ain't making sense. Like, I'm feeling out of it. I'm with these strangers. These guys at that. And they over here having secret conversations. Laughing and joking about stuff. Trying to cover it up. I don't know where we going. We down this dark road. It's late at night. Like, I'm like, all right. Yeah, so um, now I'm like, all right. I gotta figure out a way to get myself out of this situation, um, because I just I just didn't feel comfortable <laughs> at this point, um. So I'm like, all right, 
I know I, I always carry mace with me. I had mace. But, like, it was in my bag this particular day, and it wasn't, like, readily accessible. Like, I would have had to do a whole bunch of shuffling in my bag to get to it. So I was like, I didn't want to draw any more attention to me because, like, I don't want them to catch on to what I'm doing. So I'm like, all right, maybe maybe I'm not going to reach for the mace right now, but I was like, I got to get out of this situation. So I'm like, um, you know, I'm just about to open the door and I'm going to have to roll out, jump out, something. Because, like, I don't want to be, I don't. I don't know what they're thinking, like what's, what their motives is. Like I don't know what kind of situation this could turn into, but I'm I'm feeling uncomfortable and I don't want to be in this situation. So I'm like, you know, if I gotta jump out the car, I gotta jump out. So like I'm thinking and planning on how I'm gonna do this. Mind you, the car's still moving, but I I was I was like that's how afraid I was in the situation. Like I wanted to get out that bad. Um, <clears throat> so then the guy in the back seat. Like, again, like I said, he has a clear view of me, so, like, he probably start to realize I'm panicking a little bit. So, he like, oh, yeah, no, you got to make a, a right at this corner over here. And, um, and yeah, and then make a left. And now, all of a sudden, he know exactly where he going. Like, he start directing us to the uh, train station. He's like, yeah, no, turn up here, then go down here. And, like, we get there in no time. Like, no more than five minutes we get to the train station. So it's like, you knew exactly how to get there this whole time, but you wasn't saying nothing. And like, I've been, like I said, I've been noticed that we passed the train station, but like, I wasn't coherent enough to be able to like, say anything about it. And um, so like, now I'm really like trying to get myself together at this point. So I was like, all right, we get to the train station after he magically found the route in his mind, he knew how to get there. Um, so now I'm like, all right, we at the train station. So it's like, I'm ready to get out. Like, you know, cause I, I was feeling uncomfortable. So it's like, now it's finally over. So like, I don't, they saying goodbye and everything. But it's like, I don't even want, I don't even have time for that. Cause I just want to get out of this car. Like, I don't feel good in this situation. So I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get out. So then the driver says to the um, guy in the back seat, he like, yo, I appreciate that, man. Thanks, thanks for that, you know, I'm like, thanks, thanks for what, but. Like I said, I don't have time to process this. I'm like, all right, let me let me get out. So um, I get out the car, and mind you, the guy in the back seat, he, you know, this he was supposed to be dropped dropped off too. So he like, oh yeah, I gotta get my clothes out the back seat. Uh, no, out, out the trunk. I gotta get my clothes out the trunk. But like I said, I'm really just trying to rush and get out of this situation. So it's like I don't wait for him. I just go into the train station. Um, so now I'm like, you know, I'm feeling a little relieved because like i'm out of that car and it's like now it's like this brightly lit buildings people around and stuff like i feel more safe you know but not entirely it's like i i want to be home at this point so like um you know i go to the train walk up to this uh station because it was like one of the elevated tracks it wasn't underground so like i walk up to the drawing and um you know i glance down look at like the street level and you know i just want to be sure that they actually left because you know now i'm like alert now <clears throat> and I'm, like, I'm trying to be aware of the situation um so like i look down and i see that their car had left so i'm like cool 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 um and the train the train wasn't coming like i checked the schedule and it was like the train wasn't coming for like another 10 minutes so i just gotta stand and wait wait for the train um and it wasn't like I wait the whole 10 minutes and then the train finally come it wasn't until like I'm about to get on the train like the trains at the platform I realized the other guy who was in the back seat with me he never got on the train like he never even came up to the platform and it's like I can see both sides clearly but it's like he would have to been on my side because if we we drove all the way from north so you not going back north like the whole point was to get you down to the south station so you would have to still be going southward and he never came up to onto the platform never like i never saw this guy after that so like i get on the train it's like i know for sure that their their car had drove off but you you didn't get on the train so now now it's registering in my head like it was a setup like they never had like they never had to drop this guy off he rode with them like that's why he had his clothes in the car you know like 
if you if you, if he traveled to the the set, you know, on the bus, then he wouldn't just be having like you know just a random pile of clothes. Like he would have had a bag or something to carry his clothes in. But if you travel in a car, then of course you could have loose clothes, you know. And then he never got on the train, so I'm like, oh, it's starting to make sense. When I got home, you know, I'm still like shaking up from this event. Like this, like it was a really scary situation for me. Um, you know, cause like y'all know, I'm I'm like small, I'm little, I'm female in this car with three strangers, and it's like it's partly my fault, cause like I should have been thinking enough not to put myself in that situation, and then not just to get in the car with strangers, but to get in the car with three guys, and then to uh, take drugs from them, and yeah, indulge in that. So it's like I'm feeling like a little embarrassed, and like like you know. Dang, like, why would you not think, you know? So it's like when I get home, it's like I just want to be comforted because, like, you know, this was scary. Um, like, really, situation, like, we're like, like, nothing technically happened. Like, you know, they didn't do anything to me. Well, I don't know if they drugged me, but they didn't do anything to me technically. But at the same time, it was like, you know, I got real bad vibes and bad feeling about the situation. And I felt very uncomfortable. Um, and, you know, like I, I wanted to, you know, be comforted and share this with somebody. So like, you know, I would feel better. But at the same time, it's like, I was afraid to speak out. Cause then it's like, it's my fault, kind of. And the moral of the story is, that's a lot of, a lot of good points in this story. Don't get in a car with strangers. Don't smoke with people you don't know. And, um, yeah, if you get yourself into a situation where you don't feel uncomfortable, when you don't feel comfortable, you get a bad vibe, trust that feeling, and do whatever you gotta do to get out that situation. Y'all ever been in a situation where, like, you got a really bad feeling about something? Like, it's crazy.